Hi, I'm Alexis, Living Energy Farm. We have Pioneer uh, Direct Drive DC Microgrids, as we call them. We also call it Daylight Drive, where we use solar energy in a much more efficient and durable manner. The trick is to connect your solar panels directly to your biggest loads, shrink your battery set about 90%, so you're only using batteries to run your lights and maybe some electronics if you want to do that, but we're not running any motors or any thermal loads, any heat producing loads off of the solar panels. The system we have, with the high voltage setup is about 1400 watts, 1400, and with that we have about 16 kilowatts, so 16,000 watts worth of loads. Now we can't run all of those loads all at once, but we can run three or four thousand watts worth of loads. Now load means a motor or a cooker or an appliance, you know appliances run on motors. So we're going to walk you through that quick. Our systems continue to improve. We are promoting these systems around the world now. This is our solar cooker. This is an insulated solar cooker. We started this project in conjunction with uh, Cal Poly, uh, Pete Schwartz, thank you. Uh, we build in a well-insulated uh, box. We have uh, basically stovetop burners in there. We put them in parallel or series to give different resistances. Um, and then uh, we can push the heat in there and this box holds it in. You can see we've got a little bit of a heat leak right there. But generally speaking, this is a somewhat slower cooker. This particular cooker is still fairly powerful. But this can do 70% of the cooking for 10 people year round. The amazing thing about this cooker is it will work in partly cloudy weather. It can be 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside, partly cloudy, and when we're in here cooking dinner for 10 people with a solar cooker. No other solar cooker touches that. So with direct drive, you run all of your appliances during the day. That is an issue or a lifestyle change, but you have to ask yourself the question, am I willing to wash my clothes when the sun's out? If the answer to that question is yes, then you get to build a solar kit that costs maybe 20% of the cost of a big battery-based inverter-based kit and lasts the rest of your lifetime with very low maintenance costs. So there is a little bit of a lifestyle change, but if you're wanting to make that change, you get a really, it's a big change in terms of what you get out of it. Durable solar power for the rest of your life. So any small motor that you can pick up and walk around with, we're going to talk specifically about motors, but any kitchen appliance that you can pick up and tow has a, uh, a universal motor in it, and about 90% of these appliances will run straight DC. So this wire is connected to the same solar supply as our cooker, as our water pump, as all of our shop and kitchen appliances, and it runs just um, DC. That's not AC electricity, that is DC electricity, direct current, coming straight from a cell with solar panels running our kitchen appliances. We grind all of our own grain. Now in this case, we're using a different kind of motor. We're gonna talk about motors. Um, but we can uh, grind all of our own flour. So again, a motor like this will run in partly cloudy weather. It'll run, it speeds up, it slows down. We can overload the system. It's fine, we can still grind flour most any day. So we pump all of our water with a DC pump. We have a separate video where we're going to talk specifically about pumps. In our case, we have a good quality, uh, multi-stage centrifugal pump at the bottom of a well, but on the user end, you hardly notice the difference. If you really want, we have a centrifugal pump because we irrigate four acres of farmland where we grow seeds, that's how we earn a living. But if you wanted really steady pressure performance, just like an AC pump, the solar pump companies have accommodated that through the helical rotor pumps. But for us, we have really good pressure performance. And honestly, cloudy days in the wintertime, we have to pay attention a little bit. If you don't want to pay attention, just get the helical rotor. For us, we want the centrifugal. But you've got choices. What you do want to do, if you're going to run daylight drive, is get a bigger storage tank. So instead of having a little tiny pressure tank, we have a much larger tank for our kitchen. So this is a $1,000 tank. That's not free. But again, you don't want to get caught up in the false trade-offs. Okay, I'm going to save money by having a, a cheap pump and a battery inverter set that's going to run all of my equipment. That's a very bad choice. You'll spend many, many thousands of dollars trying to run that inefficient AC equipment rather than spending the money to get an efficient DC setup. So this pump, this tank will be here long after I'm dead. The pump we have will probably last 25 years the way we're running it. That's really durable equipment. We like it that way. Solar refrigerators, this one is packed pretty full. This is, was made by Sundanzer. They're not really making refrigerators so much anymore. But we have set up a company, well they're making uh, 
I'm not making direct drive refrigerators, so they're not easy to get. In any case, Sunstar is a company in Indiana. We now have a custom contract with them. The problem is that Americans are so sold on grid power, and the solar companies have done a disservice in convincing people that solar can, direct, can replace grid power without any change of lifestyle, that everybody's become convinced that they just need batteries. Batteries solve all your problems. Well, except you're going to spend 1000 or $2,000 per year maintaining your battery kit. The direct drive equipment solves that. So now we have Sunstar in Indiana is making custom refrigerators for us, for Living Energy Lights. That's our nonprofit offshoot of Living Energy Farm to distribute in the Caribbean and beyond where they take direct drive compressors. These are German compressors made specifically to run direct drive. So the compressor runs during the day and makes the refrigerator cold. And then it's a well-insulated chest unit that stays cold. It looks identical to this, but a different brand name. Uh, German Seacop compressor. I think it's actually made in China now, but German design. So the one thing you can't do daylight drive is light up the lights at night because there's no sunshine at night. So you do need batteries for lights. We run DC LEDs. They're quite efficient. We like nickel iron batteries. I don't think it's enormously important which variation of battery you use, but it is important to recognize that what's popular for capitalist market-based economies is not necessarily what's best. The, this is a 12-year-old set of nickel iron batteries. Any other battery at 12 years would be dead. These batteries are just getting started. They're still running fine, no particular fatigue. You do, every seven or eight years, have to change out the electrolyte. It's not difficult. It's distilled water and potassium hydroxide. It's cheap. So we've done that once with this battery set. But nickel iron batteries, we have a 1946 small nickel iron battery that still works. This 12-year-old set is not fatigued, still running great. So if you're looking for a durable battery, this is, these are great, um, and we like them. They're well suited to the DC LEDs and that as the voltage moves around, these batteries, uh, we can go for days without sunshine and the lights don't go out. 12 years, the lights never go out. Our neighbors, get, uh, you know, big thunderstorm, trees blow over, hurricanes, trees blow over. You know, we, uh, in a rural area, in this area, in any area, you, you expect to have power outages. We don't have power outages ever, not full power outages. You know, we live with a daily adaptation a little bit to the weather with the daylight drive. But 12 years, the lights don't go out unless we turn them off.